So a year ago in March, the Commandant announced that he was going to do major force restructuring, something that had been in the works for about a year before that. Probably what caught the most attention at the time and has continued to cause debate is getting rid of pretty much all armor. Basically all three tanks battalions are pretty much gone now. Last summer, the tanks rolled away on rail cars. The army's taken over just about the entire inventory except for some stored overseas. The goal of course is a lighter force, one that's more expeditionary, getting on and off ships and doing naval fights. That's because the Marines picture their most likely future fight to be against a Chinese Navy, Chinese military in small Pacific islands. Some people are critical of this, saying it takes a key tool out of the toolkit, especially if Marines find themselves in a fight that they didn't expect. And we talked to a number of experts about this. It's going to put the Marines at a great tactical disadvantage because it's not just the tanks. The Marine Corps is pulling out a lot of firepower. The infantry battalions will get smaller and have less firepower. So the Marine Corps will be really light infantry. And for those contingencies that require uh, more mobility and more firepower, it's going to be uh, put on the sidelines while the Army takes uh, the lead. But should Marines need a tank, top leadership says, well, they can just call the Army. The Army says not so fast. They may have 16 armored brigade combat teams, but they're spread out across the globe. They have their own priorities, and tanks are hard to get to the fight if they're not already there. So critics are really calling foul on that, that theory that Marines can just pick up the phone and get tanks at their side when they need them. Um, despite that, Marine leaders say that they've got the situation in hand. Experts, experimentation and war gamings are, are proving out their concept and that it's going to work for the future fight. And my concern is that the Marine Corps will not be as broadly uh, useful as it has been in the past. You know, combatant commanders may look at the Marine Corps and, uh, and say that it lacks the firepower mobility to participate in many kinds of contingencies. It looks at the Army and says, with an Army BCT, one call gets it all. They've got the heavy firepower, they've got the logistics. Uh, why bother with a Marine unit if, if the Army can provide everything without having to supplement it from uh, other services. Further, if the Marine Corps were to get tanks, the Army would probably offer tanks from the National Guard. Now, the National Guard is a fine military organization. The problem is it just takes a long time to get mobilized and deployed. So the Marine Corps may be waiting 120, 150 days to get the tanks that it's requested, and that's going to make it much less relevant to many contingencies, and it certainly wouldn't be um, the force in readiness the first to fight. And the analogy I make is to the Army in the 1960s. The Army in the early 1960s was designed to fight tank battles uh, in Germany uh, to take on uh, Soviet tank armies. The United States then took that army and sent it to Southeast Asia to fight a guerrilla war in the jungles, and that army did very poorly. Uh, took a long time to adapt, and some people argue it never really adapted. And that would be the situation the Marine Corps would be in. So if Marines do encounter tanks, they think they have an option, and that's these lighter tactical vehicles like the JLTV with an anti-armor missile. They're easier to get on and off ship, easier to get on around these islands, don't require as much logistics, and can take out other tanks if they encounter them on the battlefield. If you look at something that might happen in Korea, something that might happen in Northern Europe, something that might happen in the Middle East, all of those would put a premium on firepower in tanks or at least armored vehicles. If you look back at Marine Corps history, the Marine Corps has had tanks uh, since World War II in Korea, in Vietnam, in Desert Storm, and then in uh, Iraq. And in all those circumstances, the tanks turned out to be hugely valuable, uh, even in island campaigns uh, in World War II. So from that, I take uh, the observation that that's likely to be the case uh, in the future. Further, I'd note that the kind of wars that we fought were not the ones that we had planned on. You know, during the Cold War, we were focused on the Soviet Union, but where did the Marine Corps end up fighting? Korea, Vietnam, Iraq, Kuwait, uh, none of which it had planned on. So uh, one is uh, inclined to believe that the future will be uh, similarly uh, uncertain and surprising. So tanks are pretty much gone. But other changes are coming as well. The Marines are developing a brand new formation called the Marine Littoral Regiment. They plan to have three of them within the next 10 years in the Pacific alone. They're increasing their firepower with missiles and investing heavily in cyber and electronic warfare. Those are big changes that we're going to cover here at Military Times.